Hi everybody, my name is Lindsay. Welcome or welcome back to my bookish and writing channel. So today I'm here to talk about more books that I've read recently, specifically romance books. I have four books that I'm excited to share my thoughts on. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. The first book that I am so excited to talk about is The Seven Year Slip by Ashley Poston. This is, I believe, the fifth book of Ashley Poston's that I've read. I am obviously a huge fan and it is Ashley Poston's newest book as well. This book follows our 29 year old protagonist named Clementine, who is a book publicist in New York, and at the beginning of the book she's recently moved into her aunt's old apartment, and this apartment has the magical ability to travel forward or backward in time, and always by seven years exactly. One day while Clementine is still moving into the apartment, the apartment transports her back seven years, and she ends up meeting a man who is subletting her aunt's apartment seven years in the past. I loved this book. Ashley Poston has done it again. Just like in her previous book, The Dead Romantics, which I also really loved, she makes the setting a memorable character in itself. I also loved the main relationship in this book, the romantic relationship, and I was rooting for the characters. I was rooting for all of the characters. I loved the side characters, the friends, the coworkers as well, and I just loved the story. It was great. The only complaint that I had about this book, which was very early on and which was resolved quite quickly, was that about one third of the way into the read, I thought we were spending just a little bit too much time in the magical apartment and I kind of wanted to see the outside of the apartment where the main character works, what she does outside of in the apartment and at work. But after that one third mark we spent much more time in the present day outside of the apartment and I feel like that build up of being in the apartment for that long was very much worth it. And uh, without giving away any spoilers, something happens in the present day that I was not expecting and which made the story much more interesting and that build up much more worth it. Overall, I just loved this book so much. I really liked the messages that it sent about love and change, things that come and go and things that stay in our lives. And I just really hope that Ashley Poston keeps writing romance books because I love her romance books and I will continue to read everything that she writes. So seven year slip, highly recommend. The next romance book that I read was Love on the Brain by Allie Hazelwood. This is her second women in STEM romance novel. I read her previous one, The Love Hypothesis, and like most readers, I absolutely loved it. I enjoyed it so much. I read it so fast. And I also, like The Love Hypothesis, really enjoyed this book and read it very fast. So this book also follows a woman in STEM. Her name is B, and she is asked to co-lead a project at NASA, which she is over the moon about. Yes, I did do that on purpose. Until she finds out that her co-leader is her arch nemesis from grad school who despises her. And so because of that, she also despises him. So while I did really enjoy this book and read it quite fast, I did love The Love Hypothesis a lot more than this one, but I still really liked this one. I had a great time with it. The main character, B, is very quirky and funny, and all of her inner dialogue kept me intrigued. It was a very interesting writing style. I really enjoyed the romantic relationship between B and her love interest. The only complaint that I have, which isn't really a huge complaint because I was okay with it, is that the main love interest in this story is pretty much the same exact love interest in her previous book, The Love Hypothesis. They look the same, they have the same exact personality type, and I'm okay with that as long as her third book has a love interest who's at least a little bit different. Like I said, overall, I really enjoyed this book. I really enjoyed the message about love and taking chances that the book had. The main characters are also huge cat people, which as a cat person myself, I really enjoyed reading about. The romance was very sweet. I really liked these two characters together and I really liked the side characters too. They really made the story even more interesting, especially the main characters, her research assistant, the young undergraduate student, she was really funny. So if you liked The Love Hypothesis, I very much recommend this one. I had a lot of fun reading it. The next romance book that I read that I am very excited to talk about is Act Your Age, Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert. This is the third and final book in the Brown Sisters trilogy and it follows the youngest Brown sister, Eve. After her wedding planning business goes south, Eve sets out to find a steady job that she plans to keep for a very long time in order to prove herself to her family and prove that she is a functioning adult. She interviews at a cozy bed and breakfast, which she really likes. The only thing is that the high hiring manager is very cranky and allegedly does not like her right away, and as she's leaving the bed and breakfast, 
she accidentally hits him with her car. Despite this, Eve does land the job, and so she has to work with this cranky boss that allegedly doesn't really like her that much, and her struggles don't end there because as the book goes on, she discovers that she might be falling in love with her boss. One of the many things that I love about the Brown Sisters trilogy is that everybody seems to have a different favorite book in the trilogy. There's not one book that stands out among the rest. They're all equally great, fun, wonderful romance books, and everybody's favorite is really depending on each reader's personal preference. So I was very excited to see which book would be my favorite among the three, and now that I've finished the trilogy, I can confidently say that this book is my favorite. First of all, this book utilizes the grumpy sunshine trope, and it does so in such an adorable way. Eve and Jacob, the two main characters, are more similar than they realize, and over the course of the novel they have a lot to talk about and they learn from one another, and I just really rooted for these two. I also loved the setting. We're at a cozy bed and breakfast for most of the book. The setting was really a character in itself, and I just really liked it. There are multiple reasons why this book is my favorite in the trilogy, but the biggest reason, I think, is Eve herself and the journey that she goes on. I really enjoyed this book's messages about self-love and self-acceptance, and I just love Eve, and I love the journey that she went on and what she discovered by the end. I just loved this book overall. It's my favorite, and I highly recommend the whole Brown Sisters trilogy. Each book is different, each book is great, fun, funny, romantic, just very highly recommend. All right, and the last romance book that I read recently is Emily Henry's latest book, Happy Place, and I've already actually posted a dedicated review for this book, which I'll leave in the description. This book follows Harriet, who is a brain surgeon either in her late 20s or early 30s, and she is about to go on a summer beach vacation with her friend group. They've gone on several, and this could be their last vacation together. Harriet and her boyfriend slash fiance of several years, Wynn, have been broken up for months now, but still haven't told their friends. So they agree to fake date in order to keep their friend group happy and not ruin what could potentially be their last vacation together. So I've read four of Emily Henry's books by now. Two I have absolutely adored. Those would be book lovers and people we meet on vacation. One book I enjoyed but it wasn't quite for me and that was Beach Read. And this book, Happy Place, falls somewhere in the middle of those two reactions. Overall, I really enjoyed it but I did have some criticisms about it. So the things that I really enjoyed, first of all, Emily Henry's writing style. I love it. I think her dialogue is so witty and engaging, and the funny parts make me laugh, and there's just something about her writing style that I just gravitate towards. Also, all of her books take place on vacation, so I too can imagine myself on vacation as I'm reading them. This book follows Harriet and Wynne's relationship both in the past and in the present, so we have dual timelines, and I absolutely loved the past flashback scenes between Harriet and Wynne, how they met, how they fell in love, how they became a couple, and I really enjoyed those scenes as well as all of the flashback scenes between the friend group, how they met and fell in love and became a found family. So I loved all of the past scenes. Unfortunately, I was disappointed by a few things in this book and they all fall into the present day scenes. So unfortunately, I was a little bit disappointed by how the fake dating trope was written because these two characters were still angry and still hurt by one another, at one another. It just wasn't really for me. And the other thing that I was a little bit disappointed about in this book is the friend group. This friend group is described as there's nothing else like it. It's a found family. It's very loving and caring. Everybody feels at home when they're all together but a few of the members of the friend group don't treat their friends well. I do want to say that I liked this book overall. I enjoyed my time with it. I wanted to keep reading. I love Emily Henry's writing style, like I said, and I love the pattern of being on vacation in all of her books, and I'm excited to see what she writes next. So those are all the romance books that I've read recently. So I want to share a little bit what's on my TBR. So autumn is coming up, and I have a feeling that I am going to go all out this autumn with decorations and reading autumnal books. So that's that being said, I have some autumnal romance books on my TBR, and one of them is A Witch's Guide to Fake Dating a Demon. This is by Sarah Hawley. It sounds like such a fun, witchy, magical romance book, and I am excited to read it this fall. Another book that I am excited to read this fall is The Bake Shop at Pumpkin and Spice. I recently realized that this is actually the second book in a collection, but I think I can read this one without having read the first book, so I'm just going to go ahead and read what I already have. But this is by several authors. Donna Kaufman, Kate Angel, and Allison Charles. 
and it just sounds also very autumnal, witchy, magical with love stories in it, and I'm of course excited to read it. And the last autumnal book that is on my TBR for fall is Blood Like Magic by Liesel Sanbury. This sounds so cool. It takes place in a futuristic, I believe, version of Toronto and it's also witchy and magical. I don't know if it's a romance specifically, but I am very excited to read it nonetheless. And speaking of romance books, the last book on my fall TBR, at least for now, is Love Theoretically by Allie Hazelwood. I'm very excited to keep reading Allie Hazelwood's novels. And that is going to be it for me today. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you all enjoyed it and in the comments please let me know if you've read any of these books, what you thought of them, or if they're on your TBR. If you have any romance books to recommend, especially if they are autumnal, please let me know as well. And if you'd like to leave an emoji in the comments just for fun or to let me know you're here, please leave me a space themed emoji like a spaceship or a star or a planet in honor of Allie Hazelwood's book Love on the Brain. I'll see you all again soon with another new video. It's gonna be a writing vlog. Yes, I'm back at it. I am on my second draft and I am so excited to be working on Meridian's Cat again. Anyway, I will see you all again soon with another new video. Bye everybody!